We're both professional editors and we're gonna show you some of the worst edits that we've seen in our entire careers. <laughs> It looks like an 80s backdrop. They spent all of the movie's VFX budget. Yeah, that's and then when it came heat. to this, they had no more money left. <laughs> We're not that terrible people. We're also going to show the worst edits that we've ever done as well. <laughs> that's so oh, bad, bro. I failed to quality control on a Mr. Beast video. It's only going to have like a few hundred million views or whatever. <laughs> We're sorry, Jimmy. This video was optimized for the... Uh, algorithm. Whereas the full version is just under an hour. You can exclusively get the full version on our Patreon or YouTube membership. Click below to get access and to our other longer and deeper versions of our content. I'm going to take you back to 2014 and this is when action movies had one of the worst trends known to man. Shaky cam. Dude, no. No. Like, it, it was done well by one franchise, the Bourne yeah. franchise, and yeah. then everyone else tried to emulate it. Yeah. One moment, which I think, honestly, I think ended Shaky Cam entirely. <laughs> we gotta count these shots. There's like 12 shots. That's so many. I've counted before. It's 17 cuts. 17 cuts of Liam Neeson jumping over a fence. <laughs> but I, I understand this was at the height of shaky cam. Nah. I think they were absolutely going for it. They're probably rushed making this movie. What if the director spent, let's just say a hundred grand yeah. getting that sequence shot. Oh yeah. And he got all of those camera angles. Let's just say they spent two days making this. And so maybe the director came in and he's no. like, you have to use every shot. That That's is it. exactly what we're looking for. That creates the energy. That's exactly what I envisioned on set. Leave it, it's perfect. And the, and the editors were like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> if you had this footage, mm -hmm. what would you do? I would cut out like three quarters of the shots. You have him run, grabbing the fence, and then you have like a silhouette shot, and then he hits the ground. That's it. I 12 think... cuts less, and then it's great. <laughs> I think you're right. Half the shots, <laughs> yeah. definitely, just to make that work. I think I'm kind of with you, but I'm going to go the extra mile. Okay. I think this whole sequence should have just been cut from the movie entirely. So in the story, he just got framed for murder, and so he's running away from the police in Los Angeles. He turns down an alleyway, and then he encounters this fence. Narratively, <laughs> this doesn't make that much sense because now that you know he's being chased by police, what's missing in this? The police. They're sirens though, they're so sirens. we're good. Yeah, This is sirens. now justified because they're so, sirens. So the sound designer, <laughs> he figured out what was missing in this and so yeah. he had to put the sirens underneath to <laughs> imply the incoming threat. But there's no bad guys closing in. So what they really needed is actually maybe just a policeman very close behind him. And now this fence is an obstacle that he has to get over. That now justifies the faster pace. Because of the lack of incoming direct threat that is a bun that's very close to him, this just feels so pointless. This should have just been cut entirely. Hi, babe. I have something for you. I was honestly struggling trying to find an edit that is horrible. But in movies, you know, there's there's none other than probably the worst, you know, widely known, the worst movie of all time is The Room. What is it? It's just a little something. <laughs> So The Room is a film by Tommy Wiseau, and I think he fronted the budget himself, yep. wrote it all himself. He's, he's, he's an auteur, and it is just notoriously the worst film of all time. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Honestly, things that are done, that are said in the movie just don't make sense. What client? I cannot tell you. It's confidential. Oh, come on. Why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? And this carries over all the way to the editing. And in this scene, Johnny is going into a flower shop to get some flowers for his fiance. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously there's so many problems with it. It doesn't seem like they recorded onset audio. So everything's ADR. You can also control the timing and the timing here is ridiculous. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? His lips don't move. 
No. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> that one. I love that he's like standing right in front of her. Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> that edit right there. Just look at the continuity of this cut right here. She's looking at him, not moving yet. And then she's already moving in this direction. The continuity is horrendous. The comedy of the scene comes in the second half here. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. <laughs> Hi, doggy. You're the my favorite. The timing guy. here of all the ADR. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. You are my favorite customer. You're my favorite customer. <laughs> it's like off screen as well. Like all of this stuff is... You don't see their lips. So they can say <laughs> they can be saying anything. I know. And the editor decided these are the ADR pieces that we want to use. And we're going to also use this timing, which is absolutely inhuman. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. It's, it's not natural. It's at not all. natural. What it is is that it had that such a short shot to get all of those lines in. Mm -hmm. But what are any of those lines necessary? You're no. my favorite customer. What does that say anything towards the story, okay, the story of this isn't actually that much, but it says it applies nothing to the story. Like, there's no callback to it. There's no point to it. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's not pure comedy. There's another thing I've actually been, the other thing I've really, that's been fascinating in this. Tommy was so, as a classic filmmaker, is hitting all of the right rules. Mm -hmm. I've been researching for a video that I've been editing, and, uh, and, it, and a lot of it needed some historical context. And so I actually started watching a bunch of movies from like the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And one of the things that I noticed is how much the film language had changed. In the films in the 40s and 50s, every time they went to a new location, they had them walk out of the car and into the building. They then walk up the hallway. They went to the, like, let's say the receptionist. Hi, we're going to this office. They then enter. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, hello. And then the dialogue starts. That's uh, how the movies classically did it. And so I think Tommy probably watched all of those movies, studied them, I want to be a filmmaker, and recreated that film language. The problem is, is that this is a movie, what was this, the late 90s, early 2000s, where that film language has kind of like gone out of fashion. It's not really appropriate anymore. Yeah, now so we that's have... why it feels so out of place. But he studied film. I mean, it's crazy how much film language has developed because, I mean, this is, yeah, like you said, it's more mm. classic film language. And now we have, you know, Skibbity Toilet. Where did we go wrong? <laughs> Where did we go Can we go back? Can we go back to really long establishing shots? I think I prefer that. I prefer... <laughs> so we've been using Riverside for over a year now. And it's simply because they've been a great supporter in making sure that our show gets made. Not all of our guests can be in person. So to make sure that we can still make our show, we've been using Riverside for our remote podcast interviews. And the video quality is excellent. You can record up to 4K. And we've mentioned multiple times before the ease of use of their multi-track recording system. And now Riverside has changed the podcasting game again with a new AI enhanced video editor that radically cuts down your editing time. This just knocks so many hours off like instantly. Riverside's editor means you can make your entire podcast just on their site, such as their transcription based editor. You can simply search a section to cut and delete it in your video immediately. You can also remove silences with just one click. That's like half the podcast already edited. You can automatically add captions and use AI to clip with Magic Clips. Magic Clips uses AI to identify the best parts of your podcast and then shares them across social platforms. You can create those shorts of your podcast with just one click. Growing your show has never been easier. Start using Riverside for your show and use the code editing podcast for 20% off. So this is a cut that for me has haunted me because this is what I consider as one of the worst cuts I've ever seen, but yet no one has ever mentioned it. Okay. But first, I need to build the world. Tell me more. This is in the world of the Harry Potter franchise. <laughs> There's a quite a few things that people make fun of with the Harry Potter franchise and its editing. Okay. I'm going to take you for like three terrible cuts. Okay. Just so I can get you to my favorite bad cuts. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The first cut is this. When, when you're editing a trailer, you kind of need to motivate the power of the villain. You kind of have him interrupt the flow of the trailer to have him really imply the danger and presence he has in the movie. But the problem is, is that he does one noise. I felt like the editor tried, but he had no option but to use essentially the exact same sound effect every time it cuts to Voldemort. <laughs> You're waiting this for is it. already funny. <laughs> Harry Potter. That's a great cut. I like that cut. And confront your fate. That. 
run at once. Right. <laughs> Happens again. It's just kind of weird. A man who trusted you and killed him. Yeah. Happens again. <laughs> Let's finish this the way we started. Together. Yeah. <laughs> this is <it> again. <laughs> Only I can live forever. <laughs> It just happens way too many times. <laughs> so much so that that like became a meme of my friends around that time. We were just like, we were just like going around in school going, yeah, yeah. What the <laughs> freak? Where did that come from? I think only in the movie, it happens like twice, but in the trailer, it happens five times. <laughs> It's not only that, there were other characters making similar sounds. It was. Anytime they needed some kind of scream, it's like their own version of like the Wilhelm scream. Yes. Anytime anybody was falling, Team like we probably got like nine of them throughout yeah. this entire trailer. So this is why I actually feel a little bit bad. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to make fun of Ray Fine screaming one more time. <laughs> okay. So this is number two of what I thought is a terrible cut. We're getting a very intense scene where Ron and Hermione are about to destroy one of the Horcruxes. You do it. I can't. Yes, you can. And we're also kind of getting that sort of tension, that, that sexual tension is going to finally be released. Okay. And so this has become a genuinely huge moment. And I remember watching this in the cinema. Great build up. Good, letting us wait. Really making us wait. There we go. Dramatic. I like this. And then we get the moment that we've all been waiting for for years. Come on. Beautiful. I think I screamed in the cinema when this happened. But then, this. <laughs> this dude is making noises and not not good ones. But what <laughs> happened here? How do you think this cut was made? What do you think they were trying to do? Well, it seems like he was mad mm -hmm. that his little golden Horcrux. cup got, you know, stabbed. I mean, do you not know the Harry Potter lore? Not really. <gasps> uh, I did watch all the movies except for the last one. Oh, okay. I just didn't make it to the last one for some reason. <laughs> so I haven't oh, no, actually but, seen this part. But no, no one's watched the Fantastic Beats ones. No one's watched those. Well, yet. I didn't watch those either. Yeah, no one's watched those. <laughs> In the editing, what how why what do you think they were trying to do with this cut? And why do you think it didn't work? I honestly have no earthly idea. I think for me, looking at this again freshly, there's a, like a lack of motivation. Yeah, exactly. Into it. It's just such an abrupt tonal change. It's meant to be him reacting towards one of his horcruxes right. getting destroyed. Right. And I can actually see they tried to set that up. Look what happens when they actually do destroy it. <laughs> So they break they cut it, to him. and then they actually cut to him reacting. <laughs> On it, we cut back to him again here. So they've set it up. They've done the right rules in editing. Yeah. But because actually we then end up spending too long with Ron and Hermione. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a big emotional reaction. We've actually completely forgotten what's happened before. Means we get this. <laughs> His scream is just so funny, man. The idea was there. The practical yeah. execution was there, but the actual execution wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm not done. Okay. This is now going into what is my favorite bad cut. We haven't even gotten there. Oh my God. Yeah. One of, I genuinely believe, one of the best fight action sequences ever put to film. <laughs> I'm feeling the power here. What are you feeling? I'm fi Yeah. Woo! And the timing of it all, just the rhythm. I can't describe it. It's so good. I love that little moment. There was just a tiny little break. Like, it's so overwhelming. Breath. Back in. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And it just keeps escalating. Like, this is so... Like, I go... No! Oh, no! the vacuum of sound. Let's... This is... This is textbook. Masterful. Phenomenal sound design, incredible visual effects, 
brilliant rhythmic editing to really get in that pressure and just the pure tension of it all. I've been trying to like deconstruct this. I don't know what they did, but it all just works. Yeah, it's delicious. That is one of the best action sequences ever put to film and I will die on that hill. And now we're leading to almost immediately into one of the worst cuts I've ever seen. <laughs> Contrast creates focus, you know? <laughs> Voldemort decides to go inside Harry yeah. and tries to start like, sort of like taking over his mind. A lot of this story is told through sound design. <laughs> Did you see that? I, I, I love that because those are really quite jarring cuts, but they all work because of the sound design. It's motivating each aggressive right. jarring cut and it's keeping the flow of it really nicely. Look at Ooh. me. Each cut is felt because of like this aggressive sound design. It keeps on going, but then... It isn't how you are like. It's how you are not. Uh, uh. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that looks like <laughs> It's just so against the rules that they've set up. Again, one more time. <laughs> Like, it looks like an 80s backdrop. This literally looks like Careless Whisper is about to start playing. It like, does. that's what it looks like. Like this. It does. It looks like an 80s music video. Now it does. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you think happened here? Like, did they not have, to have enough footage? Was well, this like I a reshoot? Well, I think they were trying to finish the transformation. They're like, okay, yeah. we need a shot where it's like, Harry is Voldemort now. Mm. And that's what they decided to go oh. with. <laughs> we shot the whole movie, yeah. edited it all together, probably did some test screenings. Yeah. And I bet you audiences didn't understand that it was Voldemort inside Harry's right. head. They're so like, they now it is Voldemort. So this was a rushed reshoot. Yeah, I bet. You can clearly see that they put Ray Fiennes in front of a green screen. All right, just do a bunch of poses. Yeah. <laughs> and then... <laughs> bro, put that down. Put that down, bro. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord Voldemort. I didn't mean to do that. Bro, there was literally thunder that just happened. That when we did, did that. not do that. That in was editing. crazy. Go away. That God. was crazy. Are we angry at Voldemort? Bro. In the name of Jesus, bro, get out of here. Oh, no. <laughs> It was one of those things where they probably gave the editor the footage and it was just him in front of a green screen and they said to him, we don't have a VFX budget for this. Just find some... Put some stock footage behind yeah, him. put some stock just... footage behind him. As I bet you the editor probably only had like an hour to put this in before they went to print. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's exactly... I bet I you that's what happened. We, we saw what, what the movie looked like earlier. It was yeah. masterful. It was incredible. They spent all of the movie's VFX budget. Yeah, and then when it came to this, they had no more money left. <laughs> I can't believe that this is the same movie, bro. Yeah. For a multi, multi, multi million dollar movie, one of the biggest franchises in the world, to have a cut like that kind of gives me confidence. Honestly, it's it's empowering. It's actually empowering. It's very empowering. It means yeah. that we can fuck up. Yeah, exactly. So, we got this. What did we fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Transition. What the transition? Have you ever been editing and you have this temp track and it may or may not be from a super popular artist and it's gonna cost a million dollars to license it, so you have to replace it and it's the worst and you wanna die. Yeah, it's happened to me, but guess what? Musicbed just came out with an AI powered tool that will help you find a song with the exact same vibe that you can license. All you have to do is go onto Musicbed's website and search their new search by song feature. And let's say I want something super cinematic, a Hans Zimmer type score for my edit. Let's check it out. Bruh, this part right here, this is what I'm talking about. This is that grand epic score that Hans Zimmer is so well known for. And I can actually license this thanks to Musicbed's AI. With Musicbed's AI, you're gonna save a ton of time being able to use a reference track to find something that's gonna be perfect for your edit. And with Musicbed, you get the highest level of curation possible. They only let in 1% of the music. So switch to Musicbed today and get the best music out there that's only on Musicbed. Click the link in the description to get a 14 day free trial right now. Back to the conversation. We've, we've talked about a, a few clips that, you know, 
They suck. They're horrible. They're yeah. awful. Yeah. <laughs> but let's be honest. We're both editors. Mm -hmm. We also have made some questionable choices in editing. Or just there's been stuff that has our name on it that's gone out that is quite frankly embarrassing. Let's not talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, let's not. <laughs> just kidding. We're going to. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I'm going to show you a few clips of mine that have been in past work that make me want to crawl into a hole and die. I just got a, a text from a mm -hmm. producer. They're like, hey, we have this edit for you. Um, it's going to be a super low rate, but it's okay because it's just a one take. So all you have to do <laughs> is select the take and you're done. You send it off to color. You get it back. You deliver it. You're done. I think I can already see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a one take video. So it's, they did probably... 20, 19 to 20 different one takes. I pick the best one. I send like three options to them. I'm like, all right, this is what I think you should do. And they're like, oh shoot, like none of these are good. Like they're all, they're all kind of bad. So could you maybe just like cut the one takes, like different one takes together oh, no. maybe? I was like, no, because it creates horrible jump cuts. Yeah, let's just, let's just watch it. Okay, let's just fine, watch this fine. music video okay. a little bit. This is working so far. Yeah. It's a one take, you know? It's gonna be it's gonna be fine, right? <laughs> I don't even wanna watch this. <laughs> I don't wanna watch this. <sighs> I don't understand this style of music. I'm waiting for the car. Ah! <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Did you see that? I saw it. I saw it. If my home's where my heart is leaving. <laughs> Oh, it makes me flinch. There's like a few of these in, in this video. I did my best to try to hide it, but it's... Leave me a message. No, yeah, that is not hidden. That it's, was so jarring. It's bad. See, I tried to cut you tried. during motion, make it a little less jarring. So anytime there's a spin, I'm like trying to cut. I admire that you tried. <laughs> I tried, bro. Just give me the key and let my heart go dumb dee dumb. <laughs> That's so oh, bad, bro. That's so bad. I mean, could we call it a stylistic choice? That's what the manager called it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the manager <laughs> and the director too was so mad. So it was his manager that was like, he doesn't look good the whole time in all of the takes. So we need to splice takes together. So the manager made the decision over the director to tell you to yep. do all of this. Yeah, because they're ultimately uh, paying for the video. But the manager trying to protect their talent ended up making their talent look worse. Yeah, for sure. I really appreciate the fact that you're mentioning quality control and it being a mistake on your end because yeah it's on me bro it's exactly the same thing that happened to me <laughs> oh no but the problem <laughs> is is that i did it on one of the biggest creators to ever exist oh no i failed to quality control on a mr beast video not mr beast but here's not the thing, jimmy but here's the thing i'm about to put myself in so much trouble because not even they picked it up <laughs> I'm about to really throw myself under the bus <laughs> on this one. Careful, Hayden. Careful. Okay. Jimmy, don't watch this. Turn the video off. Start the video off. Turn you it never off. watch this one. The first few videos I started doing for Mr. Beast, I introduced to them an AI tool. It's an AI tool where I was able to replicate Jimmy's voice. So what it means that with his consent, I had him send me two to three hours of recordings, all of his voiceover recordings, and I ran it for a deep fake software. And what that meant is that when I was having to workshop voiceovers, I could type in the text and have Jimmy say whatever I wanted. That's so helpful. It became such a valuable editing assistant tool. Instead of just me using my voice, which was in a different tone, different inflection, different pacing, different style, yeah. I was able to do it in Jimmy's style. AI Jimmy is still terrible. Like, this should not see the light of day. Like, everyone will clearly know. We did three laps of the stadium and found nothing. I feel like this game could take forever, but sometimes you can get lucky. I searched a hundred more rooms and there was no one. I literally have no idea where they are hiding. Before I could get to the field to disqualify ZHC, Carl and Nolan noticed something interesting. And so what that meant is that Jimmy didn't have to keep re-recording voiceovers, which is the things that he hated the most. Yeah. And so it wasn't until the script was finalized that he finally went into the recording booth. I gave him that script, he went into the recording booth, he then gave me his performances. 
This is the largest stadium in the world and inside are the 10 biggest creators on YouTube. That's actual Jimmy. Like he did a really, really great performance. His AI version would not have created those types of inflections and style. This is the largest stadium in the world and inside is the 10 biggest creators on YouTube. I then threw them all in and replaced all of the AI recordings with his actual recordings. Okay. <laughs> I know what you're going to say, bro. Except for one. <laughs> AI Jimmy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's only going to have like a few hundred million views or whatever, you know? So it's a VO on this bit. <laughs> Mom's back. Wait, go see who that was. Oh my God. Despite not finding anyone, Air Rack got lucky. I. <laughs> It's so hear? bad, bro. It's, it's so, so bad. bad. It's so bad. Despite not finding anyone, Air Rack got lucky. It kind of glitches out, too. Yeah, in the listen, of it. it really glitches out. Despite not finding anyone, Air Rack got lucky. Air Rack got lucky. On the word anyone. <laughs> anyone, yeah. Anyone. It, Despite not finding anyone, Air Rack got lucky. I thought he was laughing. Oh. Oh. You were suspended in your disbelief. Our, our producer mentioned that he thought it was chuckling. So that's why I think I got away with it. Yeah, because, I mean, you're going through the video. You're watching yeah. as a viewer. You're like, okay, yeah, that's real Jimmy, obviously. And real Jimmy always does his VOs. You're not going to think, you know, six minutes in, oh, I wonder if that was AI Jimmy. Like, and you don't was, even know that technology exists. Yeah, this point. was December 18th, 2021. Yeah, you don't know so that exists. AI wasn't the huge buzzword yet. No. And so that's why we, I think I got away with it. Like we were, we were one of the first early adopters into using deep fake technology into replicating a voice. Nowadays, now that everyone is aware of AI, I think everyone would have called out that line. Right. But for me, that is like haunted me. That is the one time I, I, I didn't give him that line of script and it was too late. <laughs> that's actually oh. really bad. It's so oh bad. Oh my goodness. And I think I've kept this like to my chest all of these years <laughs> and now they know. They wonder they've stopped returning my call. <laughs> We're sorry, Jimmy. I'm sorry, Jimmy. We're I had an sorry. AI version of you, and 104 million people have seen it. Oh, no. This is why I drink Jordan. Cheers to that. Cheers to our fuck ups. <laughs>